You ready for this, babe? Are you sure you're ready for this? I am ready. I, I know we're both ready for this. We get this question asked all the time. How do y'all live in such a tiny space on wheels? And so today we figured the best way to do that is to share nine of our most embarrassing things we do living in our camper van full time. All right, so let's start airing out some of this dirty laundry. Pun intended. All right, number one, let's talk about the clothing situation. Now, in a small space for us, every inch counts, and that means even what you're bringing to wear. And so for us, sometimes we tend to wear some of the same things over and over. And you might have noticed that in some of the videos we put out. But the best way for us to determine whether we can wear it again is what, babe? Well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a pass. And we wear a lot of comfortable clothing and layers as well. We'll tend to also buy things that are like airwick, um, t-shirts that have a lot more breathing room so you don't, even if you're going into a little bit more humid environments, they dry fast, they're easy to wash by hand. Um, and I actually bought Dave and myself a couple of pants that convert into yes. shorts. And so they're convertibles. I like my convertibles. And it's a great way to be able to rock multiple outfits. Right, like multi-use. Multi-use. Showering. Sh showering? Oh, people shower in their RVs? What, really? Oh, no, we actually do shower in the RV, but not as often because it's a small RV. No, no, it's true. We don't shower every day. We don't shower necessarily every other day either. Um, you know. Obviously, it sticks and bricks. We used to shower pretty much every day, right? Yeah. So it's very different living the van life. Absolutely. Now, we do what they call the baby wipe shower, which is amazing. It's like luxury sometimes. The baby wipe shower is really coming handy. I, I find I do enjoy uh, a baby wipe shower. I sometimes change which one I want, either a lavender night or a cocoa butter. And regarding our shower, we boondock quite a bit. And when we're boondocking, we actually don't shower as frequently as we would. And that's really because we're trying to conserve our water. We have a 50 gallon tank and we're using that water for everything, right? So you don't want to use that all in the shower. And it is a good um, good size tank. It really is, 50 right? gallons. Right, but still we want to conserve that and also condensation build up inside. Worry about that a little bit. So let's talk about the toilet situation. Yes, the toilet situation. Now, for us in a small RV, it's an amazing bathroom. Anything, If you know anything about the Winnebago Echo, that bathroom is such a unique spin. It's one of the coolest features in this rig. We have a five gallon cassette toilet, which is essentially a five gallon black tank. And that is super small Tiny. in the RV community. And because of that, I need to empty it on a regular basis. And I don't always get to it as quickly as I should. So that sometimes we go into the night and I'm nervous. I have this nightmare of it actually overflowing, you know, God forbid. And so we may not be able to go to the bathroom at night sometimes, which is crazy. Yeah, unfortunately that has never happened. There has never been an overflowage, but there's things that we put in place so that we know if we're gonna be boondocking for a while so that we don't fill up our cassette toilet. Um, we have what I like to call my portable poop tent. Speaking of toilets, let's talk about an embarrassing dump moment. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about dumping of the tanks, y'all. Yes, exactly. <laughs> dumping the tanks. Now, we have to dump our gray water tank using the traditional hoses. And as you probably know, there's like three hooks on the attachment that comes up onto the drain. And some, I've actually only gotten two a couple times by accident. And you don't want to do that because I got a little bit wet on that one. Which yeah, and he got... was he, not pretty. He got a Hail Mary on that one because <laughs> it was a gray. Now, if it were black, I'm sure that would have been a hot mess. Yes. Oh, before we continue, Dave and I want to mention we have a really wonderful group over on Patreon called our Turn It Up World Insiders. It's a place for you to get to know us a little bit more intimately and us to get to know you. Uh, we do share things like exclusive behind the scenes merch, videos, live streams, and more. And what we'll do so that you learn more information about that, we'll leave it in the description box below. We would love to see you there. Yes. So let's talk about secrets, or shall we say, no secrets. You know, there's a funny joke. It goes, behind every great man is a woman trying to get to the cabinets he's standing in front of. <laughs> and that is very true. As it relates to secrets in RV parks, I do have to admit, sometimes I'll convince myself that my boxers are short. If I have to run out and get something quickly, I will do that. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes when I'm not least thinking about it, the shades are down. I'd end up taking off, you know, 
trying to change into something a little bit more comfortable and I'm just flashing the neighbors you know sometimes they'll drive by slow or they're looking in this direction and I have no concept that they might be staring at my cookies. <laughs> Time for bad odors inside our camper van. This is about to be really embarrassing y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and the first topic near dear to my heart foot odors <laughs> and truth be told my feet stink pretty Woo! bad. Yeah, and I, <laughs> this is really embarrassing. I try to clean my feet with actually baby wipes, and it's not all that effective. No, not at all. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you can tell us some awesome solutions you may have in the comments below for those smelly feet. I think the solution I have is just burn everything. Burn those <laughs> socks and those shoes. And start all over again. <laughs> exactly. And, of course, and next up is, of course, bad gas. Oh, right. Uh, you're talking 23-foot RV of just torture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes Tiny will cook an amazing dinner. Thank God we have great ventilation, but sometimes, woo. So if you don't know, you'll know now, Dave and I, we travel with our two kitties, Brady and Bailey. And where they use the restroom, it's it's kind of interesting. We have a little box under our dinette table because, again, it's a small space. And you definitely know when they use the bathroom at first. We do keep a great job at keeping it clean. But sometimes, you know, even the cat's got to have little rice and beans. Let's talk about driving days. You know, Dave and I, we have our systems. Dave takes care of breaking down camp on the outside. I take care of things on the inside. And I'm sure we have all done this where you're in a rush to break down to get to the next spot and you don't close a cabinet or you forget to take down a picture or a painting. And we've had instances where right as we drive off, there's banging, there's rattling or things are just coming out crashing. Now we have gotten much better at this next one, I think, but that is really overestimating how far we can drive. Sometimes I don't look at the weather forecast, so I'm not factoring in, you know, the wind whipping the rig and really kind of slowing down and also other rigs going by and that kind of white knuckle driving. Yeah. Now, should we talk about uninvited guests? Yes, we definitely should. Now, I am sure we have all had an instance of uninvited guests and I'm talking about the four-legged, the eight-legged, um, you know, type creatures from mice to spiders. We've had an instance where we only, fortunately, only had one yes. mouse in here, but it was a big it mouse. It was big. It was a big mouse. Now we have two cats, so that mouse didn't stand a chance. <laughs> right. Now, but spiders are another story. We get spiders all the time all in our bedroom. All the time. And that kind of freaks us out. If we're camping, say, down in Texas or something, worried about, like, you know, the black widows. The recluses. The recluses. We actually almost had a Black Widow in the rig. We did. All right. So we have this beautiful little bear. You guys may have seen it in some of our other videos. And I usually check the bear. I usually, when he's outside for a extensive amount of time, before he comes inside on our breakdown day, I usually check him. But again, rushing to get out of to a in. certain spot, we brought him in. And something, as we're I'm working through things here, triggered to say, I better check him. And I've turned a light onto him. And there sure enough was a black widow inside the bear so we should talk about rv rookie mistakes and one is forgetting the height of your rv and we're we've all been very good about the height of our rv and driving the highways and the bridge and the bridges things. but we forget when we kind of go into cities and looking for parking and we don't really think about the tree branches and i've more times than many times more times than not i've actually gone into parking spaces and heard the scraping on the roof right from tree branches mm -hmm. And one embarrassing rookie mistake is ignoring unexplained noises coming from your rig. You're basically driving your home down the road. So you hear a noise, you need to know what it is while you're driving. And that actually happened to us. We were driving, heard a rattling on the roof. And I'm thinking, oh, it's probably fine. Maybe I turned up the radio a bit so you didn't hear the noise anymore. Exactly. Bad idea. But actually, as it turned out, our solar panels became unplugged. Yeah, and that goes to the next point of a rookie mistake is not knowing your systems. You know, had we checked our Xantrek system when things were being charged on the solar panels, we would have easily have known that we weren't getting enough charge to the batteries from the solar because it's night and day once we plug those up. So knowing your systems is really important and you won't have to go a month, two months, three months, maybe longer without solar power charging those batteries.
We should talk a bit about RV awnings. Yeah. A little embarrassing episode Our there. embarrassing yes. episode with an awning. <laughs> exactly. So we left our awning out, not so worried. Uh, this is early on because we thought, okay, it has a wind sensor. It's going to automatically retract. So as the wind picked up, shouldn't be a problem. Well, that really wasn't the case. The wind picked up and the awning, it was going crazy, right, babe? And if it's we like were bouncing. not there to coach it back yeah. in, it would have ended up in the neighbor's front yard. I think that's right. <laughs> now, this is more Dave than myself, but we're both kind of mental about leaving the RV keys inside the rig when we're not inside the RV. So since Dave is always like the pocket friendly pants person, we give him the keys and he takes the keys out, puts them in his pocket when we're going outside of the rig when he's ever doing anything outside. But that comes with a price. <laughs> yes, it does. I, I stuff a lot of things in my pocket and I kind of, I forget my keys are in there. And I have set off the panic button like this is more midnight. times. It happens. It happens way too much, and yeah. I apologize for that. Yeah. And it takes me a long time. To, then I have to find out like where is it. First I'm like, why is this thing going off? Then I realize I set it off. It's so embarrassing. And then I have all these pockets and trying to find where the keys are. And it's so embarrassing because it could be like 12 o'clock, oh, at horrible. midnight, one o'clock, and the fact that it goes off is waking up every oh, one of the terrible. neighbors. But you know, we are getting better at it. I'm in rehab. I'm working on it. <laughs> And finally, our camper van is not always neat and tidy, despite what you guys may see in our tour videos. Yes, we have a lot of clothes. We have a lot of camera equipment. We have two kitties and their litter. Yeah. Right, so quite often you'll see the things on our beds. And I gotta admit too, I am not Mr. Neat and my closets can be pretty messy. Well, you know, in his defense, it's a tiny space. So if you have one shirt or one sock that's not folded, the entire place looks messy. <laughs> well, all right. Now that we aired our dirty laundry, please let us know your dirty secrets yeah. too. We want to don't leave us hanging. Don't leave us hanging. Let no. us know in the comments below any embarrassing things you do living the RV life. Yeah, we'd love to read them. Let, please yes. let us know that we are not alone. And then once you do that, take a second, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video or an adventure. And on that note, hmm, looks like there's some folding to do back there in your closet, sir. There's always folding to mm. do. We'll see you in the next one.